Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. Today we are celebrating the first Sunday of Advent. The readings can be found in your red hymnal on page 1002. And our opening hymn is number 386 in the red hymnal. O come, O come, Emmanuel, number 386. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we're celebrating this beautiful first Sunday of Advent, this season of longing for the coming of the Lord, and of course longing for his mercy, for his life, for everything. So as we come before him today, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, we call to mind our sins, our need for his mercy, as we beg for it and also, of course, immediately receive it. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down 
with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 70 in your blue gather. Lord, make us turn to you, number 70. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, 
as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned, we're of course we're now in this beautiful season of Advent, one of my favorite seasons. It's a season of longing, of of patient waiting and looking for the coming of the Lord. And it's all of his coming. We remember, of course, his coming at Christmas. We're waiting, preparing for the coming of Christmas. We're also, of course, waiting for the second coming, when he comes and we know not when, you know, in the final resurrection, we're preparing for that. We're also waiting for the way that he comes to us in mystery now, in sacrament, and in the mystery of one another and within us. So it's all of those things that we're doing, which, which requires us, of course, to slow down in some way. And of course, I, I say that knowing that this is a very difficult season to slow down, but that, it's just the invitation for us to consider ways that we might. And I think the gospel today, actually, it, we may not see it immediately, but gives us some images to help us to be attentive to, to where he may, we may encounter him this Advent season. It's when Jesus speaks about the coming, when he comes at evening, or, at, uh, or in midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. We might hear that and just think, well, it's just random times throughout the night in the, in the morning. But he's saying this right before his passion. And it, that's when Jesus, of course, when he came and he entered into this terrible night. And sometimes, you know, we, we look at Jesus and we think, well, if, if I had been there, if I could have actually seen him, then it would be so much easier to welcome him and to believe in him. But here he's instructing his disciples to be awake. But here he is, he goes through this night and time and time again, he is unrecognized. He is despised. He, people turn away from him. So we'll just, we'll just look at that, uh, at some of those touch points throughout that night. In the evening, that was, the, that was when he gathered his disciples and he said to them those mysterious words which every Sunday we listen to. 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which is given for you. Take this is, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, which is poured out for you and for many. It's the mystery of Jesus' face in the Eucharist. His disciples were gathered there, but we can bet that not all of them understood. And of course, we knew that Judas received and his heart was hardened when, 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 when encountering him there at the Eucharist. But the Advent, Advent is really a, it's a beautiful time for us to draw nearer to the Lord in the Eucharist. Every time, of course, we come to Mass, we're in a way we're encountering him when he comes to us in the evening as he gives himself in this way. But there are other times throughout, uh, throughout our week, throughout our lives, that we can encounter him even more deeply. Through the mystery of adoration, I, I know I've mentioned it a number, number of times, we, we do our adoration here on Thursdays and through the night. And a number of years ago, I was inspired because that Thursday is the day. It's the day that we remember the Eucharist more deeply, and that's why we do it here on that night. Uh, and so it's, it's an encouragement for us to lean even more deeply into his presence. He's so present in every church and all around our diocese and all around the world. We can encounter him in the evening in that way when he comes to us, really. Then, of course, he, he, re he references midnight. I think that was a particularly difficult time for Jesus. When I was in Israel, we got to go and visit the pit of Pilate's house. Not Pilate, um, Herod's house. I think I said Pilate last night. No, not Herod. The, the chief priest's house. Okay, I'm getting it all mixed up. So the chief priest's house, he had a lot of money, and he had a pit. And into that pit, Jesus was lowered. And now it's, it's reconstructed so you can actually take stairs down there and you can go and spend some time in prayer in the pit. But it's just a, a tiny little space where Jesus was there after he had been condemned by the, the religious officials. And there he, he was there in quiet, in total darkness. And when you're there, you can sense, like, just, I just wish someone could have been there with Jesus to, to ease his loneliness and the difficulty there. And Advent really is a time for us to encounter Jesus in one another as we experience the pain, the suffering, sometimes the pain and suffering of loneliness, but in a way all of our suffering is so lonely because we are the ones that have to, to do it. And so Advent encourages us to slow down, not to look past someone's suffering, to lend an ear, to listen, to be present, to be a little more quiet, less, less quick to, to speak, to talk about what's going on in my life, but to slow down and listen what's happening in the other. That's Jesus who is coming to us at midnight in his suffering. And he, it, we can be sure we will see him this Advent in that way. So it's an invitation for us to slow down, to receive him more deeply. And then at, at cock crow, I just love that Jesus referred to it. It's almost like he's directly referring to his suffering here. Because we know what happened at the cock crow that night, uh, the night of his suffering. It's when Peter denied him, finished denying him three times. I don't even know him. But then when the cock crowed, Peter looked at Jesus and saw that Jesus was looking at him. The way the story goes is Peter turns in shame and fear and, and runs away. But the mystery is Jesus looked at him with mercy. And it's important to see that. What, like what would have happened if Peter ran to Jesus and encountered him there instead? When Jesus comes to us at cock crow, he's coming to us in mercy. And Advent is also a time for us to remember the mercy of God. That's why we, I'll talk more about it next week, but uh, the, the season of Advent is a beautiful time to go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. But, and also just to remember the flooding of God's mercy, 
how he comes to us in great humility. It's one of the ways Jesus encounters us now at cock crow, so as to be attentive, to be watchful and waiting for that, to receive it. And then in the morning was when Jesus was brought before Pilate. And it's beautiful to see Jesus there. It's kind of a, a mystery when he is there before Pilate. He's filled with confidence. And Pilate, who in a way is the powerful one there, he's confused and questioning, what's happening here? Who is this guy who's come before me? And Jesus, and Jesus you know, or Peter, Pilate threatens Jesus saying, you, you know, I, I can kill you. And Jesus is so confident. I know that I am here for a reason. I've been placed here by my Father to proclaim His work, to do His will. And there's a mystery in that for us when we see Jesus coming in the morning. That's that light of morning in all of our hearts. Jesus is working in us. Our Father is working in us placing us really present in our world where we need to be to proclaim Him, to bring His life. And so we're meant to be so attentive to Him when He comes to us in the morning, those first breaks of dawn, shining in our own hearts, bringing us to where we need to be. All of those ways, Jesus really comes to us. Really, we are absolutely certain to encounter him in those ways during this season of Advent. In the evening, in the mystery of the Eucharist, at midnight, when we encounter those who are suffering and need us to be with them. In the, in, at cock crow, when we ourselves are in need of mercy. And in the morning, with Jesus radiantly in our hearts, placing us into the life of others. And so this, this Advent, we are watchful and waiting and longing for His coming. Stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, we turn to him with our needs. For the church, that through our actions and words, we may atone for our sinful ways especially during the season of watchful expectancy for Christ's coming, we pray. That world leaders may hear the cries of those in need, the poor, the homeless, the persecuted, and the broken, 
and see the face of the Lord in their suffering, we pray. For all who are seeking the Lord in today's complicated world, that they may see the face of Christ reflected in the goodness and mercy of those who serve others in need, we pray. Lord, that we may resist materialism and commercialism, especially during this season, and choose to value our spiritual riches above our material ones, we pray. Lord, for the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, for those who have died, especially Nancy Trettle, for the people of the parish for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, <laughs> Heavenly Father, you have bestowed your grace upon us from the dawn of creation to the birth of your Son, to the beauty and goodness that surround us here today. We appeal to your great generosity and ask that you would grant these our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us to remain standing just for a moment as we light our, our, our Advent wreath. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. And may this Advent wreath be blessed. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. To you be praised. the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfillment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ. O lamp to our feet and a to our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Please be seated. Our preparation hymn is number 411 in your Red Worship Book, As Servants Working in a State, number 411. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. For Christ the Lord will surely come, the King whom kings will fear, and with God's perfect justice plumb the justice we do hear. Revealing that the present age and every age that's past are not the final moral cage that judges us at last. So guide, Lord Christ, our every choice that when our hearts shall hear your step, your knock, your call, Voice, we will not hide in fear, but welcome you from realms above to your estate below, where justice, mercy, peace, and love abundantly will Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and yours for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him. Our communion hymn is number 254 in your blue gather, Your Mercy Like Rain, number 254. Come 
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which you in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have announcements. Friday, December 8th, is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is a holy day of obligation or a holy day of opportunity. We're going to have a vigil mass on Thursday, December 7th at 6.30 p.m., and then a 9.15 a.m. morning Mass on December 8th. So there'll be no evening Mass on the 8th. We did that just because, of, because we thought it would be Friday, so we make it a little easier for people to get to, hopefully, on Thursday evening. So again, it's Thursday evening at uh, December 7th at 6.30 p.m. and then 9.15 a.m. Mass on December 8th. If you brought a picture of your loved one during the month of November and haven't picked it up yet, Please pick it up today on a table near the sacristy on the left. Our Advent Even Song is this Tuesday, December 5th in the church at 4.30 p.m. There are Advent devotionals under the bulletin rack. All are welcome to take one. You may take one for a friend as well. All are welcome to our Christmas luncheon on December 19th at noon. The Notre Dame Academy students will perform part of the Christmas concert at the luncheon. Details are in the bulletin. Please let the office know if you plan to come. This is the last weekend for our toy drive. We also have a socks and underwear drive going on for the Hennepin County homeless all through the season of Advent. Our Respect Life Advent tree is up and you are invited to take a tag to bring a gift back for mothers and babies at Southwest Options for Women. Our religious education program will be collecting donations to help purchase computers for the Archbishop Flynn Secondary School in Uganda. If you'd like to contribute, there's a jar in the gather space, or you can donate online through our website. Details in the bulletin. So many ways of, of giving back this season. Um, regarding the Greek Isles cruise, which will take place this June, there are details on the website. I just want to invite, if, if anyone's thinking about joining that, now is the time to, time to sign up. The, uh, the organizers let me know that some of those cruises are starting to fill up. So if you're interested, now is the time to, to sign up. Finally, our music team of Rich Melody and Friends will be putting on their Christmas Music Cafe this, after, this afternoon or evening from 5 to 7 p.m. Stop in for a few songs or stay for the entire time. Refreshments will be served. 
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Our closing hymn is number 255 in the Blue Gather, God of All People, number 255. Like